this production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes. This is episode number 41. And uh, this is your weekly Company of Heroes video replay review. This is following a game we had that was absolutely phenomenal. If you have not seen it, I absolutely recommend it. The best since the user submitted number 26. It seems like, um, er, number 4. That was uh, episode number 26. If you're a subscriber, you will be able to get access to all those uh, older replays. And, uh... I don't know why. It turns out that the video replays that we get from users are, are just very good in general. It's very fun and, and, and fun to watch, and probably because we see some, some stuff that we don't normally see. So, without further ado, let me introduce myself. I am Bridger, and with me is Vittensby, and we are going to do a game between Constantly Laid and Political Swiss Guard, and uh, Constantly Laid is also known as Dave. I believe uh, you have some background information on him, Vittensby? Yeah, got lots to say about Dave. Uh, he's a great guy, and uh, he does shoutcast with Dayglo Ninja. We had on the show before. We featured one of his games. I think both the you and I uh, picked this one out of the replay pack. I'd promised those guys a while back that we would use uh, one of their replays. Uh, if we've featured Reborn members on the show, at least German Supreme, a couple times. Uh, we had DGN, but before he formed Laid, so I thought, hey, why not take one of the Laid replays and Stern held in again. If you listen to the audio show, he, uh, he messaged us. So maybe, you know, if you got a clan, you got a replay, maybe, uh, you know, send us a PM over at GR. And it's against uh, Pontifical Swiss Guard. Um, so, yeah, yeah this, this should be, it was one of the hand-selected games you can get in the Laid replay pack, and uh, should, be, should be a good one. Dave, I think, is more known for his Axis play. Uh, at least when I played him on some law, I think it was on St. Patrick's Day, if Dave remembers uh, remembers that game. But uh, it was a while back. But uh, nevertheless, uh, should be a good one. Uh, and uh, looking forward to it starting. Don't know anything about Pontifical Swiss Guard. I think he's a level 12, they said. Uh, so should be good. Well, then let's get it started. We're at the five-second mark if you're following along on the replay system. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. And there we go. So we're probably going to see, yep, a barracks opening from the Allies here. And, of course, Wehrmacht opening for the Axis. The question is, then, uh, what kind of opening in respect to... Uh, we don't have any. We have a one Engineer opening. Is that a one Pioneer opening, too? Yes, sir, it is. And wow. uh, Bridger, I forgot to mention, Bridger had mentioned that uh, we did record... The, the lost Tales of Heroes episode, as we promised. So, yes, and I agree, it was a phenomenal game, so go ahead and check it out. But uh, I was just commenting before, and Bridger, I don't know if you want me to talk about it, but I was just curious why the... I, it's obvious why the Axes start out with 20 fuel and Allies start out with 15, but uh, and it's not, like, a huge balance issue, but if you don't use that fuel, like, say you get a forward HQ or something, you get five more fuel, which is the equivalent of, like, you know five more seconds or something so or like you know 30 more seconds but that's okay, that's okay. yes yeah, some uh, on maps like some law so i don't know it's not really a huge imbalance but i think it's uh it's interesting if you do an ulterior strat especially because axes don't have to use uh they don't have to to build a Vermont quarters um oh, if you're using one of my Sacrilege. crazy crazy sucky strategies such as like <laughs> double the grens, double the suck, or the pi OP based on uh, something the good evil did a long, long, long time ago. So traditional slash non-traditional start, as Bridger was saying, neither one of these players did build uh, an extra pioneer slash engineer, so um, we'll see how, how this goes for them. Um, Both sides kind of starting with the same thing. They, uh, they sent their engineers or pioneers sideways to get the fuel and then the munitions in the other direction they sent their first squad to grab the connecting uh you know control point the uh, strategic point at the at the bridges there and it looks like the allies are going straight up to do oh he's going to try and i don't know what he's doing with that house it's not necessarily a place you want to put a rifle squad in that seems kind of interesting why he, when he would do that 
Um, I think we should also mention really quick, uh, we do have 10 beta keys for the Opposing Fronts beta uh, that are available if you want to learn how to enter that contest. Go ahead and listen to the audio show or go to the website talesof.wordpress.com, soon to be gamefire.com. So, uh, yep. do you have any idea normally, why he's got a... Uh, yeah, is I, he trying to prevent normally, a machine gun from getting in there, I assume? He's trying to prevent a machine gun from going in there, but normally that's kind of... Uh, if I'm going to put a right, if me personally, my opinion, uh, if I'm going to put a rifle squad in there, normally I would get a jeep second because sometimes uh, your opponent will deploy an MG and you don't want to walk right into that. And uh, the MG and the rifle squad tend to get there at the same time. So if he has anticipation of it, it can really set you back and you'd be pinned to your base. But one thing to note is the wire placement, uh, you know, just by the 16 munitions in the south. Even though you get free wire cutters, that's very, very popular strategy. I see that in almost every replay on Samoa nowadays, uh, to put that wire uh -oh. there. So, MG still got good. flanked at some point and had to retreat. I didn't even notice. Uh, it, was it, it must have been attempting to get forward, I think. He was probably moving it forward after having just built it, because he built two Volks first. And I think it ran into the rifles in the middle there, and it didn't have time to set up, so he had to retreat it. So he lost his connector. That's very, very bad for the Axis early in this game. Now they're going to have to bring back the Volks to try and potentially uh, help out there or uh, something. He's probably going to have to creep the MG up, hoping not to run into to, to rifles. And now we have the rifles playing uh, the game in the backfield of the Axis. See, this is actually a good decision. If you're, if you're the Allies and you're at this high munitions point in the north... And you go, well, I could go left and get the victory point and the fuel point, which gives me some fuel, or I could go north and get the munitions point. Maybe you don't want munitions, but it doesn't matter, because if you go north, you get double the munitions relatively, because you get plus 10 and your enemy gets minus 10. So in the end, you're going up 20 munitions over your opponent versus going up 5 fuel if you went left here. So harassing your opponent rather than grabbing those neutral points is almost always a good option. Yep, I was not quite sure why Dave was kind of pl Dave was kind of playing this a uh, little bit passive in the south. He was sitting a rifleman squad by his fuel and anticipation. Anticipation, boy, you can tell that we've recorded an audio show, a 50 minute Rudy replay review, and now <laughs> yeah. this one. And I, I would say, I'm struggling. So, but uh, wow, that's where's the strafing run when you need it? <laughs> it's about. Four, four CPs away, man. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, those look at this is this is how much armor or not armor protection, I guess, uh, a stone building gives. But is he gonna lose his only last rifle squad? Is he gonna get out of there just barely in time? Yeah, he's gonna yes. get it out of there. No, no. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised. The is there not a door on the other side? No, there isn't. Wow. I figured there'd be a door on the other side. He could have exited to the back and then hit the retreat button. That would have been very useful. Lost a rifle squad that early. That's bad news. Machine gun setting up. Grenade going off right in, right into the hut. Interesting. Another grenade uh, going into the squad. machine gun there. He did lose the squad, but he oh, he did kill the machine gun. Very nice. It's going to be recoverable. No, he's going to recover it. He's going to try and retreat it. Yeah, he better retreat that. I really doubt he's going to get it out of there. Oh, my God. Oh, he lost the guy in the same place. I can't believe it. The other machine gun squad's now going. Wow! Uh, oh, that was really uh, bad luck and just bad judgment, too. That sounded like a good idea at the time, but because of the... I wish you could sort of give them a d retreat direction. That would be so nice. Because that happens on Samoa yeah. all the time. You want them yep. to retreat. Like, well, I came from across that bridge, so when you hit the retreat button, instinctively you feel like they're going to retreat across the bridge, but no, they go way across the middle of the map, even if you don't control it. Yeah, this must be, I don't know if Dave actually won this, but uh, this this is going to be a pretty crazy comeback. Yeah. What did he, he just lost three squads, I believe. Yeah, and yeah that's, that's that's hard to come by. But uh, And we do have uh, Krieg Barracks coming out. That I don't know if that's a mistake. Uh, you know, Puma's, uh, he doesn't really have the fuel right now, but with the amount of squads that was lost... Um, he certainly already has the capping power, so maybe you know investing in tier three and some vehicles wouldn't be such a such a horrible idea. But uh, he chose to go tier two, so we'll see. Um, and one thing noticeably lacking is MP40s, 
And oh god, oh, grenade. That's a comeback mechanic right there! Wow! Oh, he did get the last butt guy of that squad out. That! Look at how many guys there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six of those probably got killed by that grenade. Wow. Yeah. That was 25 munitions. Very, very now very now good. you understand the mentality behind letting strafing runs kill 17 guys because yeah. it's, you know, it's just scaling six times up really. Much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I would I guess he was not paying attention to those guys at that point. I could I could almost hear him swearing even though it's only a replay. I could totally hear him swearing because that's what I'd be doing. That yeah. was very I guess bad maneuvering because he wanted to get his guys next to the next to the the fence there, but he also wanted to, uh, you know, avoid the grenade. He, if, if he put his guys that close and he knows the enemy has grenades, that's when you've got to watch. And you've got to have them selected. And just, you know, if you see that come, hit tab to select one of them, click somewhere, hit tab to select the other, click the other direction, at least you won't lose both squads. Yep, that's a good usage of hotkeys. If you notice the bridge, um, Pontifical Swiss Guard used his uh, Volksgrenadier's ability, which they got in 1.6, I believe. Oh my god, am I aging myself right now? Um, anyways, now they can build sandbags and wire, as most people know, before they couldn't. I've noticed on Samoa especially, if the axes hold the center, and you're not, you know, immediately going back out there, they can lay a ridiculous amount of wire and sandbags and, you know, like, again, now, you know, that one Volk squad with three guys never would have happened before. You know, now he's laying, you know, sandbags oh, over there. So you got to be really careful and a little bit more aggressive, I think, on this map where you can find yourself walking into 15 rows of wire and, like, 30, you know, sandbags. And that's pretty... Although there there is lots of heavy cover in Samoa, uh, you know, being able to build that without... And now, you know, a lot of people are going Tier 2. Grenadiers can do that as well, so... It just kind of doubles on how much defenses the Axis can have once they, you know, take and hold the position. So, a lot of good harassment. Got to give Dave uh, kudos yeah. and an uber amount of credit, I would say, because he's been definitely keeping that fuel decapped. And uh, although he, I believe he's still probably at a squad disadvantage, uh, that's been crucial, uh, I think. In, and here comes another grenade. Ah, that one, yeah. Nice movement, though. Nice dodge. Yeah, that, that capturing the fuel has really changed the flow of this game because I'm sure, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think he might have went Tier 3 unless he's generally a Tier 2 player, which I don't think he is because he doesn't have a Medic Bunker. So um, maybe so, Dave can tell me a little bit more if he's yeah. after this key, you know. Now we're building some sandbags over here to back up the barbed wire to make sure the enemy can definitely not get through here. That's interesting. Um... He's sort of crippling himself. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here comes a grenade through the hedge, maybe? Yeah, from the yeah. Grenadiers. <laughs> nice. Oh, from the Grenadiers! I thought, yeah. the, I thought the Riflemen were about to do that. I was zooming in on the wrong spot. Wow. Yeah. Now, this is interesting. He's... I don't know why the Allies have not grabbed that central victory point. Is it because the machine gun can shoot on them from there? I think they're just out of range if you cap it from the north. No, the that machine gun in that building can't hit there. I, no, if you I go so. any, I any closer, it, it can. And this is what I was talking about, about Volksgrenadiers being able to wire. Right. I mean, you're, but I don't like see I how said, this is being you, useful to the Axis. And why the Allies haven't capped that middle point yet is beyond me. I don't know. Dave, uh... Dave, you're going to have to explain bit. yourself. And now we have sandbag walls going up in the north by where that, you know where the the oldest trick in the book Ooh. with an M8 mine. Yeah. You see it? That's not a bad place to put it to, to prevent... But that does prevent reinforcements from your side, so there's a disadvantage in every one of these positions that they're putting their, their sandbags up in, right? Yeah, but he's been harassed enough from on that spot where he's like, you're going to have to go the long way, buddy. This is really interesting. The Axis is like, okay... This is fine. You just hold on to that center for me and just keep your tickets coming down. Well, he is a level 12, so I'm assuming he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty much in a good position here as long as things stay the way they are. His status quo is fine for him. Let's see when Dave yeah. realizes that he's that he doesn't hold on to the middle. <laughs> uh, here comes a bunker. See, this is this is exactly what I was talking about. I had not seen this replay before, but every time I play some on now, this is what I run into whenever I 
whenever I uh, aren't aggressive with allies. I see rows of sandbags and and, uh, and wire, and it's like, give me a break, dear God. What is this, you know? But uh, who what knows? What this is is the allies yeah, already have a tank depot, and therefore the sandbags are irrelevant because he can charge through it now. Yeah, Maybe but... Maybe not completely, but... We have a Sturm Armory coming up as well, so... It should Ouch. be a Medic Bunker upgrading, I hope. Lost the OP to some Flamer Engineers on the right there. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, but even though you can run over it with a Sherman, you, you still have to run over it with a Sherman. Yeah. And walking into a line of Grenadiers and presumably AT, cloaked AT guns with the Sherman... Yeah, I don't know about that, but, uh... There's the bunker doing its job. There's still, you uh, know, a uh, huge... Uh, oh, jeez! Grenade and counter-grenade. There's still a huge blind spot um, that can be exploited with that bunker. Um, if you sneak along the river bank, if you click, well, you can't click on the bunker without switching sides, but there's a huge blind spot. You can pretty much just walk right into the Axis base if you're uh, if you're playing up there. I know I had someone do that when he, he just walked the engineer squad. Maybe it was two. Way back in early retail, and just basically demo charge through the main entrance. If you come along the the river bank, and then you go along the stone wall to the main entrance. Yeah, that you're talking and about? you can just sneak right around there. Just and reminded me of that for some reason. So Dave has done a very good job of uh, harassing the axis. He's taken that that fuel point, then he came back, destroyed the OP, and took it again. And uh, that cost the axis a lot of uh, manpower that they didn't get reinvested with that OP. Only he still doesn't realize that he's got two squads sitting in the middle that are not capping the victory. Capping the VP. Uh, yeah, that's really disappointing. Uh, we have a Puma uh, coming out. And now what do we have going on here? We got tank traps. Dave, are you sure that this is a level 12? No, I'm just kidding. This guy has a really defensive play style. Um, like we were commenting clearly. in the, the other, on the Rails of Metal match. Not everyone plays balls out. No pun intended. Aggressive. I'm, so, I, I'm tempted to try and type to this guy and say Captain VP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, Dave's a cool guy. He's a pretty good player, but uh, everybody has their moments. He I mean, sometimes you just definitely had his moment on that e one. Everybody. Yeah. Sometimes you just like, okay, so I've got the middle. I've got the middle locked down, so I don't have to think about that. And so you stop yeah. looking at it. He's got to look up at the score and go, "Have I almost won yet?" And then go, "Wait, what? What's going on?" Yeah, it's the clear. It's a clear oversight. Um, I don't think he's really been. Okay, you got ten freaking squads of guys there. I don't want this to be the focal point of this video replay review. <laughs> this but you realize he's probably the, the, the allies are probably going to loot. Whoa, whoa! Oh, I thought that 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 grenade kind of landed in nowhere's land. But um, I I feel like this is this replay is already half over, and therefore the allies are probably going to lose. <laughs> and so. <laughs> They're probably going to lose because they left that point uncapped. <laughs> I don't know. We we got the almighty M10 coming out, Bridger. All right, it's going to crush all those sandbags. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a medic bunker. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't see that before. Did you say that? You probably did. Uh, mm, I was I was looking of. at the pretty explosions. I wasn't listening to that. And now we have the other Puma popping out. Now, when we get to 300 tickets, it will play an audio sound that says, we're down to 300 tickets, or whatever, right? So the allies should notice that the victory point is not in their control at that point, right? Yep. All right, this Puma's going down. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get away from an M10 with a Puma. Now, they say an M10 on the move only has a 60% chance to hit a Puma, and that's a weird bug or something, but that worked pretty well right there. There he goes. Come on. There's no way you're walking right by that VP. Oh my. What are you, Dave? <laughs> you're you're freaking he's, toying. He's banging toying his head on the him. ground right now. I guess he is. <laughs> he's just toying with him. I think he's like I'm gonna. It's like a, it's a, it's. I'm pretty sure it's oh, a psychological effect. I can own you infantry. and turn this game around at any time. But just I run them over. To Come on, so they're right bad. there. They're in a big row. Run them over. Wait. Why am I cheering for that? I don't know. I just think it I know why you're scared. It's exciting. Yeah. Oh, oh my it's god. It's exciting. Yes. Run him over. 
It's Ride exciting and also it would prove yet again how freaking amazingly overpowered that is. Wow, he scared them all away. It's interesting that he chose to get an AT gun as opposed to getting a, a Stug, but that's alright. He doesn't have the fuel for it. It's not Why did he just though. retreat all of his squads? The Axis player? Yeah. I don't know. I guess he was scared of the M10? Ugh. The Sherman Tickler, aka Pack 38, doing its good work and uh, scratching the paint. <laughs> Wow. There goes a piece of wall blown open by that M10. Really funny things in this physics engine can happen in the replays. Yep. More so, grenadiers popping out. A late veterancy. All right, we're um, at 300 tickets. So and you should hear the audio we thing. Have 300 points left. Right. So that should tell him when it says allies have less than 300 points, he should be going. Oh, shit. Let's see if that happens. Crowd troops are coming for us. Oh, no. I love that sound. That means engineers with flamers just got owned. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, he still is he a doesn't get the, the grenadiers out of that. Yep. Grenadiers just got owned. Oh, wow. They were inside the bunker and he... Oh, that's bad. I can't believe it, because Dave is making a very good comeback from that early loss, but except for that victory point. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, Dave, I expect a comment about this VP. Yeah, I, I, I expect a comment from Dago Ninja. Like, it would be a good idea to put this in the game. I mean, he must have, like, lost a bet, and, 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 and Dave, like... <laughs> this is a replay Dave has to submit or something. <laughs> no, I think that Dave and DGN had a had an inside bet. Can you win a game on some law without capping the center VP? Oh, he noticed. Without touching it. Oh my God! <laughs> Praise the Lord. He noticed just long enough to cap it, just long enough for the Axis to make a comeback and take the middle. <laughs> Because, I mean, look, yep. we're, we're more than halfway through the match now. That has to be what happens. Unless the allies take all three points and just grind them down to nothing. Yeah, well, it looks like it's probably just going to be... MG, MG uh, uh, 42, LMG 42, rather. And I can't believe it. You mentioned that we saw earlier... Holy crap, that rifle wow. squad just got shredded. Yeah, LMG 42 and an MG 42 were both firing at it instantaneously death. No, I think it was the OP... AT gun that did it. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's what we would have said, you know, a patch or two ago. Yeah, well, the Allied AT gun, not the Axis. Uh, it was kind of the same thing, but yeah, it was mainly the Allied AT uh oh, gun. here come the running. Uh, here's the M10. And killed one. Awesome. Now he's going to back up and try again? No, he's just going to get out of there. Dave is just too polite. He's such a fine <laughs> gentleman. <laughs> Uh, that's cool, Dave. You're not uh, you're not using borderline exploits and giving him the psychological advantage of a VP, so. and I still think you're going to take it away with the with the win. I don't know. We got like 11 minutes left here. Let's find out what happens. The Germans are after one of our. Axis have support. lots of stuff on the field. They just got to get it all organized. Allies have an M10 and a Sherman. Do they have anything else coming out? They they have 83 fuel, so they're not too far away from another Sherman if they needed it. Now, listen. You bastards, we have just painted this tank. Now the engineers <laughs> are going to have to come out again because you guys decided it would be a good idea to pick up your, 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 whatever it is you use to scratch the paint and scratch the paint. And that's what you get for scratching the paint right there. You see? That's, we're going to make an example of you guys so that the next guy doesn't build a Pack 38 and anybody who's watching isn't going to build one. Just for that reason. And and who said you can't counter AT guns with tanks or yeah. you shouldn't be able to counter it? What was that? I keep on reading that on the post and the forums from someone. But, uh, yeah, anyways. I remember laughing because somebody made the point that when somebody said, how come when I try to shoot an AT gun with my Sherman or with my with my tank, the the Allied AT gun won't die. And somebody came back with I thought was a pretty clever response and said, "Well, maybe you should stop trying to counter anti-tank gun with a tank." 
You know, and at the time it was funny because we were talking about the Allied AT gun. But when you're talking about the Axis AT gun, it's not funny anymore. <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Dave just picked up the the win. I wonder if it, I wonder if Dave wants to be called the artist formerly the, the player formerly known as Dave now has converted into constantly laid. Well, he's gonna get constantly laid after he gives his opponent a 300 ticket advantage and then makes a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know. It feels like this game is incomplete because now they're taking back the North too. So how the heck possibly could one of these sides win in the next eight, nine minutes? <coughs> drop hack. Yeah, okay. Drop hack. There you go. That's the. They wanted to include the the example of the drop hack in here just to make sure that they people didn't think that they weren't you know well rounded. <laughs> nice. I guess that would be it. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty, not necessarily back and forth game. We had a little bit of back and forth action, but I think that the Axis player has, now he's getting a mortar. It just seems like, I don't really feel that, this, that, that he's a real solid tier two player. Um, probably shouldn't be messing around with it. Really needs level two. Listen, if you don't know how to use tier two, don't use tier two. Don't touch it, okay? It's only for real men who know what they're doing, okay? And that, that was my oh, man. ridiculous yep, exactly. Tony Soprano. I just alienated all the Italian-Americans. Thank you very much. I listened to the show. That's all right. I thought we were Italian-Americans. Oh, that's right. We are. I forgot. Okay, never mind. It's okay because I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh! That grenade just... Good God. And then finished him off with a bar shot to the head. This seems to be a very bad assault by the Axis right now. We have a uh, tear chosen. He's about <clears throat> point and a half away from getting a tiger race. Is a uh, meanwhile is we have crew company repair chosen? vehicles and oh, four armor. CPs. So he's literally like he could go for a Pershing right now, couldn't he? He's got four CPs and he's already got crew repair vehicles. Yeah, well you get it. There three. it is. He's got it. That's what I That's thought. Three. Am I being retarded? Yeah, three. Oh, <sighs> such a long, long day. Oh, he's running over mines as he's retreating. That's bad. <laughs> Allied mines, I mean. We have a we have a croc flowing down the uh, middle road of Samoa. Yeah, Dave has a pretty solid lock on this game in the center. Yeah. And I, th I don't know that mortar m might have been useful earlier, but I definitely think the Axis aggression seemed like he was content with. I have no idea why. With well, I guess Dave's psychological warfare <laughs> actually <guess> worked. So. <laughs> He's like, you'll never cap, cap the center VP, man. You'll never do it. So he just nonchalantly walks, strolls over. Oh, don't I have control of this sector already? Here we go. Raise the flag. Thank you. Good game. GG. Yes. Although he's not British, so. I don't know why he spoke like that. Probably just be a pompous ass. I, I assume that's why I gave him a British <laughs> accent. <laughs> I've taken the left. Here comes the croc. There's really no... no. Okay, here we go. Watch the pack. <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh the pack and might be able to do something. There yeah, it is. right. It's on a road. What? what are you talking about? Dave, don't back up. You know he can't counter your croc. Except unless he uses those those grenadiers there. Main gun destroyed. But the pack's gone already. Nice. And Here crew it comes. repair vehicles. <laughs> Do repairs. And of course the Shreks won't fire. Of course not. Why would they fire? And it's not we like got a, to kill tanks. What used to be the Sherman clipping bug, but now it's a penetrated hit. Oh my god. I can't See, believe he got that croc out of there. The, I, I think the pack isn't even. Like they don't do enough damage, it just never penetrates. Never. 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 Yeah. Never. Except when it does. But it never penetrates. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. And that croc is running away. You know, I think when a croc gets a damaged engine, it should explode. Because the engine is on fire in a tank filled with kerosene or whatever they use. Napalm. All right. He needs to take such a Did he see he's talking about fuel repairs? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's it's messed up, but then again, I mean, <clears throat> it's 150 munitions, but...
Like I said, I think just lowering the speed at which uh, they travel while that's happening, I think, would be a nice fix. I don't think it's yeah. that bad right now. Obviously, Allied War Machine's a lot more. Wow! <laughs> that... Yeah, it's just randomly exploding. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's, like, it's like an invisible tank is driving over them. I guess the munitions just got cooked off. Or somebody, yep. some allied invisible guy is behind the line sabotaging stuff. And here comes the uh, the traffic jam. Looks like uh, Dave might be going for a base rush here. He might be. He might be going for a demoralizing, crushing, you know, so with, by the end, uh, by, you know, four minutes from now, his opponent's so demoralized, he just goes, oh my god, I can't possibly win. Well, definitely what was missing. There's a lot of things missing from the mind. Axis players play, but the main thing was is he never built anything but Pumas out of his Sturm army. I mean, a stug or two really could have helped. Combined arms, you know, as Axis, not just AT guns. And, I mean, God, AT guns and grenadiers can do it sometimes, but wow, not in this, not in this game. Killing a AT gun kills you a lot of XP. You get 6 XP for the gun, and like 4 for each guy. Yeah. Whoever said base rushing was bad, oh, I guess that was us. <laughs> but, uh, yes, there are. There is a time and place for a base rush, and, and it's when you're instinct was... Dominating. Yes, was right on, spot on. Or unless you got some crazy new strategy like a Challenger Lee had the uh, Demo Charge, Bar Rifleman, Airborne. I believe it was airborne to try, unless I'm being oh, a little too tired. But yeah, this is this reminds me of some of my 1.3 replays where I got totally owned and all I had was packs and uh, horribly wounded grenadier squads. Yeah. More field repairs. He's got 400 freaking munitions. You can spam this thing till the cows come home. Well, at least in 30 seconds when he gets to use the ability again. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much. Ow! <laughs> Look at those not of body parts. There's a shoe. Uh, sorry, that's a foot and a leg and a knee. He doesn't need those now, right? We can have those. What's hit shot? Um. His dog. He loves his dog. I don't know. Well, he's waiting. This is kind of a common problem, I think, with Terror. Maybe not all the time, but Tiger terror. Ace. The Tiger Ace you, tends to come a little bit too late. Now, I'm not saying he was winning this game at the end, but <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the Tiger Ace definitely is coming too late. That Pershing's been on the field for like six, seven minutes now. It's very obvious that you could not kill every single of his snunk. Snack. I know what it's You know what's interesting? The tank got its name because when it was being developed in World War One, at least this is the story I heard, when it was being developed in World War One, uh, they had to keep it secret. They didn't want the Germans to find out what they were developing, so they just they they sort of codenamed it and pretended and, and made the plans say that what it was is it was a development for a water carrying vehicle, uh, you know, something that carries water, a tank, right? A tank of water. So that's where it's got its name, was from when it was uh, still a secret project. They were trying to convince everybody it was just, you know, a water-carrying vehicle that would uh, bring troops water on the battlefield. And uh, so it got the name Tank. I think that's kind of interesting. At least that's the story I heard. It might not be right. That is, that is interesting. So I guess Dave was uh, included this in the replay pack as a good way to beat Tier yeah. 2 to 3. And yeah. And the gloat. I, I, I thought he was going to put it in here just to show off how he lost. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, let's see. Yes, Nades I agree were destructive. that. <laughs> this is the new Conway. See, <laughs> <laughs> I just can't avoid. <laughs> Loose see, so many. <laughs> if, you, if you want style points in a video replay review, what you have to do is end it with An field repairs. Victory? <laughs> no, field repairs and allied war machine for only style points right at the end of the game on your tanks. Yeah. Right now. And end it right there. So you just got to pop the two abilities. But uh, so I guess uh, in retrospect, that was Dave's demonstration of how to beat tier two to three. Uh, we have quite a early game. 
blunder by Dave losing those three squads, but a nice nade placement and excellent harassment of the fuel definitely uh, kept him in the game, and so he could tech up uh, some interesting defensive orientated operations, so to speak, with all the sandbags and and wire, not necessarily well placed, and kind of a late medic bunker and veter veterancy, I think, contributed to the loss. Um, definitely never crossed the side of the river. That was a, a big determining factor. Those are um, and could have used uh, tier three, I think, a little bit better. Never got a stug out, and uh, we all know that a stug supported by grenadiers is uh, pretty effective. If you, of course, if you're doing tier two, three, if you're just doing that for pumas, I mean, allies are gonna have some kind of counter for pumas by the time you get to three, um, and unless you're using them semi-defensively. I really don't think you should be running them around the field, kind of like uh, Pontifical Swiss Guard was doing earlier, and that's why he lost at least that one Puma in the upper right. There was also a couple bad retreats um, that the Axis player made. Uh, overall, I think, dis despite the, that early loss and despite not capping the VP, um, perhaps Dave was playing like 100 games, or perhaps it was some... Uh, sinister plan or perhaps it was a bet between him and the DGN but uh, we'll, we'll never find out we'll never know and never find out well at least until I I ask him no we will never tomorrow. reveal why okay yes but right. uh, overall an interesting game I guess it, as a strategy demonstration uh, if that's what it was meant to be as part of the late replay pack the replayed re rep yes pack <laughs> then uh, <laughs> play Replayed. on words very witty guys <laughs> But overall, an interesting game, and I do agree that he he had a pretty pretty good strategy to counter tier tier two to three. Uh, if you don't want to use a weapon support center, that is. Yep. All right. Good game. Uh, absolutely good of them to put that up for us, and I believe it means it's time to end the show. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video replay reviews this week, and we finally got the thing out. Stop bugging me. We finally did it. We haven't missed a single week that I didn't say we were going to miss. Now, right? Every single time we've made it, so you can stop yelling. It's loud. You're allowed to stop yelling now. Seriously. Just get off my back and stuff. All right. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Send us your favorite Tales of Heroes moments to talesof at gamefire.com, and uh, as well as your feedback on the show, what you think could be made better, what you think you hate. Is Vittensby's long rants doing uh, strategic talk sound more like Bueller? Bueller. No. Or you just hate it when I zoom in on the body parts while he's trying to get you to focus. Hey, over here, to the left, there's a battle. No. Okay. No. No? No. no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whatever you think, send it to us. Feedback is uh, tales of at gamefire.com. And look for the new site coming sometime in the near future soon, TM. Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs>